Well, again, it's an awesome opportunity. And in fact, if I have to be honest, this is the very first baptism that I've done since I've been senior pastor here. So it will always be special to me. But baptism is always special. And I hope that today as we were going and baptizing uh, little Miss Teagan that you were remembering back to your baptism. Many of you may be baptized here in this church. Maybe another Methodist church, maybe a complete different denomination. But baptism as a sacrament symbolizes many things for believers. I hope as we baptize Teagan today that you thought about some of those. And one of the key things that baptism represents, and I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about it today, is unity. Is unity. Believe it or not, there's not a lot of unity in our country right now. Or in our world. Maybe even our denomination. Sometimes in our own houses. So I've titled today's message, Blood is Not Always thicker than water because what we should see is that the waters of baptism should unify us above all else one of the key areas then again is unity I'm going to have some verses up on your screen but if you want you can turn in your devices or the pew bibles in front of you I'll be reading out of multiple translations but this first passage Ephesians 4 1 through 6 I will be reading out of the NIV for those who, with good eyesight, it'll also be on your screen behind me. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6 says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, who is through all, and who is in all. That's what Paul wrote to the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. Paul also then wrote a letter to the church in Galatia. And this is what Galatians 3, 26 through 29 says. Again, following the same vein as we just read in Ephesians. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it's very clear, at least from Paul, and here in a few minutes we're going to see from Jesus as well, that the bonds of unity are very strong, or they should be very strong, especially amongst the church universal and the body of believers. Today, I'm going to, the next slide, usually I try to crescendo or come up with the big ending. But today, the question you're about to see is the main point of today's message. For those taking notes, we have to ask ourselves, are the waters of baptism in the unity they represent more powerful than what divides us? That's the question I want you to answer today. Are the waters of baptism and the unity they represent more powerful than what divides us? In this, clay, in this case, then, is water thicker than blood? After all, Jesus said, Jesus said in John 13, 35, New Living Translation, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So the question I have to ask myself and the question I ask you is does the world know that we are Christ's disciples by our love? Because according to even Jesus himself, this is how we prove that we are his disciple. Do we love one? So when people are in our streams, when people come in and out of our circles of influence, do they recognize that we have been with Jesus, if you will, by the way we love? 
I don't know. For me, yeah. Except when I'm driving. Most people that drive with me on the road probably don't realize I love God. Probably don't realize I love them. Because I probably don't. No, what is it? Where is it? We all have those areas, those people that we find difficult to love. But it says clearly. So I often ask myself, is the love I have for others, the love I have for others that are like me, the love I have for others that are not like me? Do I have enough love where those who know me would be like, yeah, he is a disciple of Jesus Is the water, are the waters of baptism greater than what divides us? So I started thinking, wow, what divides us today? And I'm still trying to get this into like a 20-minute sermon, so I only chose a few. Because it seems like we choose to be divided by anything and everything nowadays. But I think there's a few that are particular maybe even to this church, to our denomination, to our city, to our country. What about... Sexual orientation. All right, there, I'm jumping right into the deep end. Like, well, I didn't even give you guys a chance to, like, prepare. We jumped right in to human sexuality. It's divided our denomination. As many of you are aware of the past few years, many, many churches have left the United Methodist denomination to start other denomination, to go other places, because we could not continue, or we, many felt they could not continue to be united because we felt different about this issue. I can't find it anywhere in the Bible where it says I'm not supposed to love every single person, no matter of their sexual orientation, like they are made in the image of God. Amen? Oh, my God, that was quiet. Woo! It's not in there. I'm not here today to talk theology about it. I'm not here today to say what's right and wrong and what's sin. I'm just called to love everybody. And I don't see a passage in Scripture that says I'm not supposed to love those whose sexual identity might be different than mine. We've seen how it's tore up an entire denomination. And we're just, we're just the next one in a series of denominations. Our Presbyterian friends, our Episcopalian friends, just to name a few, have already gone through this themselves. Our world is divided over it now, it seems more than ever. Are the waters of baptism more or stronger than how we feel about human sexuality? What about race? ethnicity or color should be no surprise that not only are we struggling to understand how to get along with one another in sexual orientation but with race color and ethnicity it's only been two three four years since George Floyd, George Floyd happened and other things that have caused what has already been underlying underneath the surface to bubble up and explode do the waters of baptism unify us more than the color of our skin. I hope so. I hope so. What about our nation? Christian nationalism all in the news. And again, I'm not here to talk to you about what that means. We're going we're gonna to get into a series uh, probably in August. We're going to start a series that will probably last a couple months on how to be a Christian in the political arena because it is important. As we come into a time of election, no, no time during that will I tell you how to vote. Legally, I'm not allowed, but personally and morally, I don't think that's right. But we'll look at ways to be a Christian in this circle. So I'm not here to argue for or against nationalism. I have an opinion on it, but I'll save that for personal conversations. But is what unites us in the waters of baptism stronger than nationalism? If so, then we have to worry about our brothers and sisters that don't live here in America. We should weep for the thousands and thousands of people, Palestinians who have died. We should weep for the thousands and thousands of Israelis who have died, bonded by the waters of baptism. Those in Ukraine and Russia, what's going on in Central America and Africa and all over the world, do the waters of baptism supersede how we feel about our nation? And the truth is we have brothers and sisters we'll never meet this side of eternity, who will never step 
foot in our country. And I still, just like human sexuality, find nowhere in the Bible where it says anything other than I am supposed to radically love them. Amen? That was louder. Okay. Here's a good one. Denominations. All right, Pastor, I can love people who are different than, than sexual identity. I can love different colors. I can love different nations. But we all know that United Methodists are the only ones that are going to be in heaven. That was a joke. But so many times we're divided by this. To me, it's, it's an awful. We've talked about this at this church quite a bit. There's now over some, somewhere over a thousand different recognized Christian denominations in the world. Over a thousand denominations who in some way recognize themselves and report themselves to be Christians. How dare we talk about unity? And the truth is, most churches and denominations split over the color of the carpet than they ever do about theology anyways. But truth is, when we're united in Christ, the waters of baptism supersede that. And in truth, if you look at the core tenets of the world's major, religion, major religions, and we think of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are the three main. There's others, but the three main. There just came out a report that they share 15 core characteristics. And when you look at those 15, included in maybe the Ten Commandments and others, you would realize we agree on about 90%. Not a lot of people out there waking up not thinking they should love their neighbor, kicking the dog, right, murdering somebody. We don't, we don't think those ways. We have these things in common. Yet over a thousand different Christian denominations... Many times in this church I have said, Satan's greatest, or Satan's number one goal is our destruction. His number one tool is our division. Right, Abraham Lincoln, a house divided cannot stand. I'm surprised how we're still standing when there's over a thousand different denominations. Split on matters much less trivial, or much more trivial than the ones we're talking about. Do the waters of baptism supersede your denominational appeal. And then here's the one that's going to get me kicked out of the church. But I'm here to tell you today that the Lion of Judah is greater than the elephant or the donkey. I'm going to say it again. The Lion of Judah is greater than the elephant or the donkey. We are so divided today. I try as much as I can to watch what's going on in our political arena. Again, the last eight, nine days have been pretty, uh, pretty amazing, and, and at least on the, especially on one side, we have a, uh, what they're calling a possible assassination attempt. Again, we're not getting into that. I'm not going there, but uh, that's what they're calling it. And then a, a, a huge four or five days of a general conference. On the other side, uh, we have what seems like disunity in deciding if the current president uh, should be able to even finish out his term and run again. That's, that's problems inside those own parties, let alone across party lines. But the Lion of Judah, the waters of baptism are stronger. They should be stronger than what's coming up in the next few months, what's coming up in November. I don't know who will be sitting in the Oval Office, but I know who will be sitting on the throne. The Lion of Judah must be greater than your elephant or your donkey. We're going to be there. We're going to spend quite a bit of time there in the weeks ahead. Because as a Christian, there is a role we play in the political arena. But it needs to be over a foundation of unity. This was so important to Jesus that he even prayed this prayer one of the final times in the Bible, John 17, 20 through 23. This time I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. This is Jesus praying. Now, Jesus could pray for a lot of things. And he did. And yet right before he ascends into heaven, he believes that one of the most important things he can spend a few minutes praying for is our unity. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. That's us. I pray that they will all be one, 
just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that may, they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such, I love this, so that's why I chose the New Living Translation, this phrase. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Perfect. Not perfect in the sense of without air, perfect in the sense of complete. Well, we have such complete unity, us today, the body of Christ, that the world will know that we are sent by God. Many of you who call this church home know that I'm an avid reader. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd in that way. I'm always reading, uh, usually nonfiction, but every once in a while I'll, I'll dip my toes into some classics. And I love Fyodor Dostoevsky, if anybody likes, like, no, Dostoevsky fans, Crime and Punishment, Brothers Karamazov. <sighs> Tough crowd. Tough crowd. All right. Well, here's what Fyodor said one time in, in his very famous novel, The Brothers Karamazov. To love a person means to see them as God intended them to be. That absolutely is one of my favorite definitions of love. And if I love people that way, it would radically change how I see them. And that's why Jesus was so good at that. Jesus would look through the muck, in the mud, in the mire, in the scars, in the sin, and he would keep talking to someone until he found the divine spark that we all have, and he would talk directly to that. What would it look like if we all saw people the way God intended them to be? It would mean loving the different. Those who think differently than you, those who look different than you, those who might even act differently than you. To love a person means to see them as God intended them to be. Look at these verses found in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, and 12 through 14, Paul again, this time to the church in Corinth. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, excuse me, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So that we're different, it is the same God at work. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one, but of many. I'm going to ask our team to come forward as we get close to our close just a few more minutes loving people is hard is loving people hard for anybody else or is it just like the pastor and that makes me the worst pastor and the, well, okay. all the congregations like it's easy to love everybody our pastor hates you all right like but people are the worst sometimes come on people can be the worst there's a as an introvert um i love i, I like you know people of, of like mind who are introverts and Social media never disappoints. There's always these great memes about people and introversion. And there's one I saw again this week. I've seen it many a times. But it's this person walks outside and walks back in and says, basically the line is like, I'm staying inside today because it is way too early outside. Right? And i got to be honest. Uh, I feel that way sometimes. I'm like, no, nah, I'm staying in. There's way, it's way too people out there. Because it is hard. It is hard. I'm not saying it's easy. No one is saying it's easy. Jesus doesn't say it's easy. He just says it's necessary. I'll tell you a quick story, and it's, a, it's one that happened just this morning. And God doesn't usually, like, hit me over the head with things. I mean, every time he talks to me, he hits me over the head because I'm stubborn. 
but I don't always get that, especially on the way to church. But I'm driving on the way to church today, and I get over here to the corner of State and Wells. So I'm coming up uh, Wells in the corner of State there, right down here by the Pizza King, and I see a guy coming at me on his scooter, one of those little scooters, and he's, you know, he's doing the, if you guys can remember back 25 years to Dumb and Dumber, where they're just kind of doing this on the old hog, it's kind of what he looked like, right? He's kind of doing this, driving down the road, and the first thing I thought of was, ah drunk driver had too many DUIs, and now he has to ride a liquor sickle. That's exactly what I thought. Now, I wish I could be super holy. He'd be like, I stopped along the side of the road and prayed that alcohol would poison. You know, I didn't do any of that. I saw him coming my way, and I'm like, yeah, I wonder how many DUIs he has. And then God, like, instantly hit me like, dude, do you know what you're talking about today? Like, loving people? And so right then, I was like, God, I forgive me for thinking that. He's probably just really poor. Crap, over two. On the way into church today, talking about how the waters of baptism unify us, how we're supposed to love everybody who's different than us, I batted 0 for 2. First, I thought it was a liquor sickle. Then I was like, oh, maybe not. Maybe he's just really poor, and, and you know, that's what he has. And I didn't mean it derogatory, but even just thinking that way, it's like God just stopped me in my tracks and said, really? Like, what if the next time you saw that guy coming your way, you're like, that is someone that is radically loved by God? And that is someone that, if I ever get the chance, I have to radically love as well. Not that I have to, but that I get to. Maybe if the trip from Wells and State was longer, I would have had that epiphany. I did not. Why? Because it's hard. We judge. We, we, we look at them, and they're different. We instantly, you know, we download all these things about them. Truth be told, that dude could just love scooters. That dude could love going max 35 and back it up traffic for miles. Maybe that's what that guy loves. But I didn't think that way. Truth is, if he has 10 DUIs, truth is, if that's all he could afford, the truth is it doesn't matter. What does it matter? There is nothing that guy could represent that would cause God to love him any less. And as God's disciple, I'm supposed to feel the same. Amen? Amen. Let's continue to be a church and a people who love people. Who don't stop to see if they are worthy or not. Who don't judge people. But let's be a people who radically love everyone we meet. Because there is no one we will ever meet who is not infinitely loved by the Heavenly Father. Not one. Not one. Not one. My prayer today is that we will be a people whose water of baptism is thicker than blood. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the, even the hard reminders that I need on a daily basis. God, I talk, I preach, and I try. I truly try to live in such a way not to judge. And then just in a brief moment, these, I see someone and these thoughts come in and none of it matters. I'm, I'm just supposed to love them without thinking, without judging them worthy or not worthy. I'm so unworthy of your love. And God, every day I just need to get better at giving it unconditionally to those. God, and we are so divided as a nation, as a world, God, as a denomination even in the UMC, we're so divided. And so I often wonder, are the waters of baptism stronger than what divides? And I find myself praying as you prayed that we might be completely, perfectly unified. Father, forgive me for the times where I look at others and judge them less worthy of my love. God, it, I pray it's never intentional, but... My flesh is still there, and I still do it, and I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you so much for your grace and your love for us. May we always extend it to those around us. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.
going to ask the band, um, we're pretty good on time, but I'm just going to ask the band to play something quietly. Uh, I never want to end the service without an opportunity for prayer. If you're here today and maybe you're like me and you saw that same guy and you need prayer, we'll pray together. Maybe it's something completely different than what I preached about today. Maybe it's something that came up when you remembered your baptism and it's just reminding and remembering what that means. Maybe you're here today and you're struggling with sickness or addiction or anything like that. We just never want to close this time without prayer. So at Kalila plays for us quietly. I would ask that if that's not you and you're here today and you're perfect, which I know is many of you, that you perfect people would just be reverent as those of us who need prayer. You can pray there, you can come to the altar, or you can pray with me. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, oh you are good, good. Thank you so much for being here today. Always special when we can get together. Something a little extra special as we get to celebrate with Miss, Miss Tegan today. The baptism. Again, here in a, a couple weeks, I think we're going to start a series on, again, being Christian in the political arena. Kind of continue in this unity thing. Don't get me wrong now. Don't leave here and be like, well, pastor said everything's accepted, everything goes and all that. That's not what unity means. Unity means that inside of that or under that umbrella, there are differences. And there are things that we need to stand for and stand on. But nothing should compare to the unity we have as brothers and sisters of Christ. For those who want the regular family, if you guys want when I'm done, have your pictures and everything. Say congratulations to Miss Teagan. Otherwise, I'd like to dismiss you now with this blessing. So now, may we be one just as Jesus and the Father are one. May we see people the way God sees them, as God intended them to be. And may the world know us by our love for God, for each other, and for the different. Grace and peace, we are dismissed. Never gonna let me